Good morning everyone. I am Dr. Pupendra Saha, Assistant Professor of Department of Internal Medicine, BP Koirala Institute of Health Sciences, Tehran, Nepal. Today we will discuss about pulmonary hypertension. This presentation is made for 6 semester MBBS student of BP Koirala Institute of Health Sciences. I hope this presentation will be useful to the other MBBS student of different semester as well as the interns and the junior resident who are doing the residency in the department of internal medicine. In this today's presentation, we will discuss the definition of the pulmonary hypertension, we will discuss regarding epidemiology, classification and pathophysiology of the pulmonary hypertension, we will also discuss about the clinical feature diagnosis and the treatment of the pulmonary hypertension. So what is pulmonary hypertension? As you know, pulmonary artery arises from the right ventricle of the heart and it has certain pressure. If you calculate or if you measure the pressure over the pulmonary artery in the normal individual, it will be around 14 to plus minus 3 mm of Hg. But some of the researcher has kept 20 mm Hg as the upper limit of the mean pulmonary artery pressure. Now, if the mean pulmonary artery pressure is more or equal to 25 mm of Hg, then at rest, then it is called the pulmonary hypertension. If someone has, let's suppose if someone has the mean pulmonary artery pressure of 27 at rest, then you have to suspect, you have to diagnose those patients as a case of pulmonary hypertension. Okay, remember this value. Etiological classification. So, we can categorize depending upon the pathophysiology or, or etiology, we can divide the pulmonary hypertension into five category, five groups. So, number one group is the pulmonary artery hypertension per se. There is, there is a problem in the pulmonary artery per se. Number two is there is a pulmonary hypertension, there is increase in mean pulmonary artery pressure, but that is because of the left heart disease. We see so many cases of the mitral stenosis, MR, AR or AS and ultimately it, all the patient will, will have some of the feature of the pulmonary hypertension and those group of the patient falls in category 2. Similarly. We have also seen a patient with COPD and ILD who had developed the core pulmonary lateral. So this category of the patient falls in the in the category three, that is pulmonary hypertension due to long disease. Category four is the chronic thromboembolic pulmonary hypertension. As an MBBS student, you may not have seen a case of this condition, but we, as a as a consultant of the medicine, we have seen some of the patient who have uh, these conditions. So, this is one of the rare conditions, okay. And number five, despite working off for so many etiologies, so many causes, sometimes it is very difficult to diagnose what is the cause of this pulmonary hypertension, then that category of the patient was is, is kept in the category number five. So, that is the pulmonary hypertension of unclear or the multifactorial mechanism, clear, clear. Now, what is the epidemiology? This epidemiology is basically for the category 1 pulmonary hypertension that is pulmonary artery hypertension. So, in, in this today's presentation, we will just discuss about the pulmonary artery hypertension. So, it is common in all age, race and gender. There is no any race or age or gender uh, as such much predilection um, and it is one of the quite rare disease. But if you see the gender wise, it is more common in the female, okay, it is more common in female. Now look at the different pathophysiology or etiological causes of the different uh, types of pulmonary hypertension. We have already discussed category 1 is pulmonary artery hypertension and some of the cause of the pulmonary hypertension are like it may be heritable, it may be connective tissue associated, it may be HIV associated, but mostly it is the idiopathic. Idiopathic, we do not know what is the exact cause of that pulmonary artery hypertension. Okay. Then second cause I have already discussed, we have already discussed is that second cause is the pulmonary hypertension due to left heart disease. 
it's like with different valvular heart disease can cause the pulmonary hypertension later on. Third category is pulmonary hypertension due to long disease like obstructive or restrictive lung disease. Fourth, we have already discussed is because of chronic thromboembolic phenomena. Five, we have already discussed. We do not know the exact pathology or it may have the multifactorial mechanism. So let us revise again. What is pulmonary hypertension? The pulmonary hypertension is the increase in pulmonary mean pulmonary artery pressure more than 25 mm of Hg. Clear? Clear. It has different types. Category one is pulmonary artery hypertension. Category two is is the pulmonary hypertension due to left heart disease. Category three is is the pulmonary hypertension due to long disease. Category four is due to the chronic thromboembolic phenomena. And category five is unclear or multifactorial mechanism. Clear? Clear. Now let us look at the this complex pathophysiology. As a MBBS student, you you should you is it's not necessary that you you know the, all the details of the the mechanism or pathophysiologic mechanism that cause that can cause the pulmonary hypertension. But I recommend you people to know just what is going on in the pulmonary artery where when there is a pulmonary artery hypertension. Number one phenomena is there is a vasoconstriction. There is vasoconstriction. You, you can look here. And why there is a vasoconstriction? Why the pulmonary there is a pulmonary vessel get constricted? It's because of the action of the endothelin. What is the action of endothelin? If there is increase in activity of endothelin and decrease in activity of prostacycline and the nitrous oxide, which are the usual vasodilator. So to treat the pulmonary artery hypertension, you have to give endothelin agonist or antagonist? Antagonist. If you can antagonize the action of endothelium and you can reduce the pressure. Similarly, you have you can give the prostacycline analogs or chemicals that increases the nitrous oxide. Other mechanism, other pathophysiological, there can be the like proliferation, cell proliferation at the level of the tunica media, there can be a uh, inflammations, there can be a thrombosis process going on. So there are various uh, pathology, patho pathological mechanism going on when someone has the pulmonary artery hypertension. Okay. Okay. Then what are the clinical feature? So clinical feature as a clinician, we see some of the cases of pulmonary hypertension. Some patient may be completely asymptomatic. They do not have any symptoms. When they do the echo, then you can see some of the feature of the pulmonary artery hypertension, asymptomatic. Some patient, if you take the history very, very carefully, they give doctor, I have shortness of breath, on exertion, I have fatigability like that. Okay, this is the second category of patient. They, are, they have just exertional shortness of breath and fatigability. But most of the most of our patient all uh, presented to us in the OPD or the emergency because of some complaints, some problems. So they usually present with the feature of the right-sided heart failure. And I know you you are all, all aware of the feature of the right-sided heart failure. The number one feature is the is the feature of anasarca. The patient may come to you with the history of leg swelling, abdominal swelling, distended neck veins like that. Okay, and sometimes. As you know, there is a right ventricular hypertrophy. When there is a right ventricular hypertrophy, then definitely there is a um, like supply and demand impairment or problem. Your right ventricle need more amount of blood, but you cannot supply that. That's why you can have some form of the anginal chest pain. Anginal chest pain sometimes you can have anginal chest pain. So these are the things that can occur in pulmonary hypertension. So when you examine the patient, when what you when you examine the patient, uh, we see the two feature. One is the feature of the pulmonary heart hypertension, and another is feature of the right-sided heart failure. In case of pulmonary artery hypertension, sometimes we may get the like in on the inspection or in the, in the palpation, we can get the parasternal hip dip like that. Okay, there is a parasternal hip. And on auscultation, we can when you auscult it properly, there is a loud P2, loud P2, and we can also auscult the ejection systolic murmur at that area in the pulmonary area, and we can also get uh, the like the S3 and S4 gallop, especially in the tricuspid area. So these are the usual finding of pulmonary artery hypertension, and regarding the. Uh, feature of the right sided heart failure, we can get the right uh, increase in JVP, we can get the positive hepatocellular reflex, we can get the pulsatile liver, 
uh, we can sometimes we can get the pan-systolic murmur in the tricuspid area. These are the findings in a patient with the PAS. Okay, till now we have discussed what is pulmonary hypertension. What is pulmonary artery hypertension? Just remember, it's the increase in mean pulmonary artery pressure more than 25 mm Hg at rest. What are the different categories? Number one is pulmonary artery hypertension. Number two is pulmonary hypertension due to heart disease. Number three is pulmonary hypertension due to long disease. Number four is pulmonary hypertension due to chronic thromboembolic phenomena. Number five is, is a multifactorial mechanism. What are the pathophysiological mechanism going on? There is a vasoconstriction and the, there is increased activity of endothelium and decreased activity of prostacycline and nitrous oxide. What are the clinical features? Asymptomatic, accessional shortness of breath or may have feature of right-sided heart failure. Now we have to diagnose the patient. What are the tests you want to do? Okay, number one test you can do is ECG, electrocardiogram where you can see the feature of the right ventricular hypertrophy and I know you uh, you have you, you all are aware of the feature of the right ventricular hypertrophy in ECG. So what you see in a QSR pattern that is your predominant R wave in V1 and V2 in V3 normally it's not like that okay normally Q waves are more predominant here but here is R wave is predominant this feature is a sud like suggestive of the right ventricular hypertrophy. You will also get the feature of right axis deviation and sometimes you will also get the feature of right bundle branch block. And if there is a concomitant uh, right atrial enlargement, you, also, you will also get the P pulmonale, but here is there is no P pulmonale, okay. There is uh, P pulmonale, it is a tall uh, P waves you can see, okay. And there is also feature of right RV strain you can uh, see here, okay, the RV strain. These are the features that you can get uh, in a patient with uh, pulmonary artery hypertension. Next test you, want, you can do is a simple easily available and cheap test is chest x-ray. In the chest x-ray what you have to do, you have to measure the diameter of right descending pulmonary artery you can see here. It has horizontal, horizontal part and the vertical part. At the junction of horizontal and vertical part you have to measure the diameter over here. If it is more than 16 mm in female and more than 17 mm in male then we have to suspect the pulmonary artery hypertension. Okay, okay. Then another important test usually is available in like in most of the tertiary care centers the echocardiography. What you can see in the echocardiography? You can see, you can see the right ventricular uh, wall size, whether there is a presence of TR or not. You can grossly estimate the uh, pulmonary artery pressure by calculating the right ventricular systolic pressure. You can just have the gross idea. Okay, and you can also see whether there is any problem in the left side of heart, whether there is any mitral stenosis, MR, AS, AR or some like the low ejection fraction like that you can see. To diagnose the idiopathic pulmonary artery hypertension or category 1 pulmonary artery hypertension, there should not be any abnormality in the left side of the heart, you have to know. Only there is a problem in the right side of the heart, there may be the right ventricular may be hypertrophied, there may be the TR, there may be increase in RVSP, okay, these are the features that you can look at the echocardiography. Other tests as per the availability in the centers, you can do ventilation perfusion scan, you can do pulmonary artery angiography, you can do 6 minute walk test, this is the functional, we can assess the functional. Uh, disability by doing 6 minute walk test, you can do cardiopulmonary exercise testing and these are the like minor tests like you can do liver function test and autoimmune workup because one of the etiology of the category 1 PA is autoimmune disease like SLE, like uh, systemic sclerosis. So that's why you need to work up for the autoimmune disease because if you, if you diagnose autoimmune disease then you have to treat that conditions. Okay, then this is the one of the MCQ question for you. Okay, this is a right heart catheterization, usually available in the center where there is facility of cath lab. In the BPKHS, we are doing the right heart catheterization. It is the gold standard for the diagnosis of the pulmonary hypertension. But it is not required for each and every patient of pulmonary hypertension. Let's suppose if there is a there is a patient with severe COPD and the patient has called pulmonary, it is not necessary. It is necessary only if like there is only mild symptoms of COPD and there are severe PS. The symptoms are discarded and this, that patient can have only isolated PS. To diagnose this conditions, we have to do the right heart catheterization one. And if you 
suspect the idiopathic PAS, then you have to do, okay. Then uh, sometimes like you have to plan for the transplant which you are not doing in Nepal, then in that condition you have to do the right head catheterization to definitely diagnose the PAS. Vasodilator reactive PT testing, it can be done while doing the right heart catheterization. What you need to do, you need to give the nitrous oxide or epoprostenol, they are the vasodilator. So what happens if you give nitrous oxide, then the pulmonary artery vessels should dilate there. When there is a pulmonary artery pressure, then there will be the reduction in the mean pulmonary artery pressure. Reduction, they decrease because it dilated. If it is more than 10 mm of Hg, there is, there is a, let's suppose there is a 30 and after giving the nitrous oxide, it's a 20. But without reduction in the cardiac output, without reduction in the cardiac output, then we can say this is vasodilator reactive. In that conditions, we have to keep the calcium channel blocker for the treatment of those patients. That's why you need to do vasodilator even for uh, taking the decision for the treatment. It's a very important test and usually done for the uh, when you suspect, strongly suspect the category 1 pulmonary artery hypertension. Clear? Clear. So, what are the treatment modalities that we have to offer? As I, as we have discussed in so many sessions that when uh, you are planning to treat your patient, you have to know uh, that you have to counsel the patient because it's the, it's the, it's the progressive conditions your patient will have problem always. So that's why you need to counsel patient properly. You need to educate what is this conditions, what is this uh, pulmonary artery hypertension. And usually we do not recommend the patient to do the sternus exercise because when they do the sternus exercise, then they can die and they can have the syncopate attack. That's why we do not recommend them, okay. We recommend them to take the sodium restricted diet if they have feature of right ventricular failure. And definitely, we also recommend them to take the vaccine against influenza and pneumococcal. Okay. The supportive treatments that we can offer them are we can offer them oral anticoagulants, oral anticoagulants because I have, when we uh, when we are uh, like um, discussing the pathologic mechanism of the pulmonary hypertension, one pathologic mechanism is the uh, like there is ongoing thrombosis process going on. Uh, in all category of the pulmonary artery hypertension. That's why we have to give the warfarin uh, to a patient who, whom you have diagnosed as a case of category 1 pulmonary artery hypertension. Okay. And we have to give the diuretics if there is a feature of right sided heart failure. We have to give oxygen if there is a feature of the uh, like low saturation. If the saturation is less than 92 percent, we have to give the oxygen therapy. Deduction if there is a feature of right sided heart failure, but you have to uh, be aware of the deduction therapy because it can cause different types of erythema. Iron if there is a concomitant anemia. Okay. Then specific treatment that we have to offer at the first of all, we have to do the vasoreactive test. Okay. What is vasoreactive test? What is vasoreactive test? We have to give what we what, what which molecule? Nitrous oxide or epoprostenol. What do you have to see? Drop in mean pulmonary artery pressure by more than 10 without reduction of the cardiac output okay this is this can be done by right heart catheterization yeah if the vasoreactive test is positive then we can try calcium channel blocker uh, like amlodipine like uh, nifedipine like this type of drugs we can use if it is negative then we have to choose other drugs okay look at here calcium channel blocker wh what you can try is like nifedipine we can try it's a 30 mg dose diltiazem we can try 120 mg OD, amlodipine 2.5 mg is the starting dose. We have we have to go on increasing the dose. Okay, and if the with their patient is vasoreactive test negative, then we can we have to prostanate. This is the prostaglandin analog. We can give the endothelin receptor antagonists. We can give postpo diastasis inhibitors and guanyl cyclase stimulator. So calcium channel blocker, as I have already told, if you start the amlodipine, it's one of the common drug we often use in a patient of idiopathic pulmonary artery hypertension, who are vasoreactive, uh, we can go up to 20 mg for amlodipine, it's high dose, it seems high dose. And if the patient is not responding to the cal calcium channel blocker, uh, even after three months, then we have to use other drugs as well, okay. 
Regarding the phosphodiesterase inhibitor, as you know, ultimate action of phosphodiesterase uh, inhibitor is it increases the action of the nitrous oxide. Ultimate, it causes the vasodilation of the pulmonary artery. The common uh, PD inhibitor that we use is sildenafil and tadalafil. We use okay, tadalafil. Uh, to a patient, uh, but we have to counsel them regarding the side effects of these molecules like uh, they can have severe headache, uh, they can have priapism, these are the side effects that can occur. Uh, this one is another newer drug, but it is not available in Nepal, uh, is the Rio Ciguet. Just you know, you just read the name, okay, just do not go in the details of these things. Uh, then sometimes we have to do the balloon arterial cestostomy. Okay, so like if there is a um, heart failure, and if the patient is in the in stage, and you may have to do the like perforate the atrial septa to reduce the pressure over the pulmonary artery, and it helps in decreasing the uh, syncopal symptoms and the feature of the right-sided heart failure. Balloon arterial cestostomy. Now, on the conclusion, the uh, conclusion of the treatment of the pulmonary artery hypertension, if you diagnose a case of pulmonary artery hypertension, okay, and the, you can give diuretics, oxygen and oral can anticoagulant as per your decision. You have to do vasodilator testing. If it is positive, then you can try the calcium channel blocker. Okay. If it is negative, then you have to treat uh, these conditions with other molecules like uh, you can try the epoprostenol or inhaled iloprost or prepoprostenol like that drug like that type of drugs. So, so these, these all are the treatment of the category 1 pulmonary artery hypertension but what to do with the category 2 or group 2 pulmonary hypertension we have to manage the left sided heart failure. We, we need not to treat the pulmonary artery hypertension. Uh, there are not any drugs for that conditions. In group 3, if it is associated with the lung disease, then we have to target the lung disease and sometimes we have to give the oxygen uh, for that conditions. In group 4, uh, because it is there is a pulmonary artery hypertension, that is why you need to give the uh, anticoagulation like warfarin or newer uh, novel anticoagulant as and we can try. So, one recommendation for the pregnancy is if you uh, if you are diagnosed as a case of uh, idiopathic pulmonary artery hypertension, then it is contraindicated to be pregnancy. You have to avoid the pregnancy. For that, you need to use the contraceptive of choice like barrier or progesterone only pill like that. Okay, but do not you do not conceive the child if you are a case of pulmonary artery hypertension. So, take home messages are. Pulmonary hypertension is defined as increase in mean pulmonary artery pressure more than 25 mm of Hg. Clear? Clear. At rest, you have to add at rest. Okay. And if it is more than 30 mm of Hg at exercise, that's to call the PAH. There are five groups of pulmonary hypertension according to etiology and hemodynamics. Group one is PAH, pulmonary artery hypertension. Group two is pulmonary hypertension due to heart disease. Group three is pulmonary hypertension due to lung disease, group 4 is pulmonary hypertension due to chronic thromboembolic phenomena, group 5 is pulmonary hypertension due to multifactorial mechanism or unclear mechanism. And what is the gold standard test for PH? It is the right heart catheterization and drugs are calcium channel blocker, prostanoids, endothelium receptor antagonist and phosphodiesterase inhibitors. And before uh, going for the treatment, especially in a patient with PAH, you have to do the vasodilator reactive testing to decide whether you are supposed to use CCV or not. And treatment with vasodilator and other drugs only recommended for IPS and hereditary PAH. It is not recommended like giving the calcium channel blocker or prostanoid or ERA. It is not recommended for other category of the patient like uh, group 2 and group 3. Thank you. Thank you so much for the kind attention. If you have any queries, any problems, then you can definitely write in the comment section. Till now, bye-bye. We will meet again. Okay.